Coach Buzz Williams and the student athletes from Texas A&M are joining us. Coach joined on the platform by graduate guard Tyrese Radford. 27 points, 15 rebounds, 6 assists in 42 minutes tonight. Junior guard Wade Taylor IV, 21 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists in 44 minutes. And senior forward Anderson Garcia, 12 points, 5 rebounds, including, of course, the three-pointer that forced overtime. Uh, we will open it up for questions for the student athletes. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get your microphone and start uh, right in front of us on our right side. Hi, Travis Brown at the Eagle. First, Tyrese, uh, on the three-point buzzer beater shot, what, what did you see from uh, the, the inbound, I believe because you were inbounding the ball, and Anderson, what, what, did you, what was your view of the play and uh, the ball going in? Um, I mean, our coaches drew up a play, and um, my belief in the coaches and the coaches' belief in the players um, was just is amazing. So um, I knew when they was drawing the play up, um, somebody was going to be open. Um, and all credit to the coaching staff and uh, my teammates and also Andy for just having the courage to um, hit the open three. I would say the same thing. Um, I was just trying to do the little things and – that was something that, that I thought that I would be able to do to help the team. Was the initial uh, outlet to Jace or the initial look to Jace? No. Um, it's really the open man. I mean, four, um, four was started hitting, so obviously they was going to uh, kind of face guard four and kind of take four out the picture. But like I said, um, for Andy to step up and just show how brave he is to just knock down that shot uh, means a lot. Going to our left. Brent Swarneman, Eastern Chronicle. Wade, I know you all want to play again, but what does it say about you all that you all fought back to push it into overtime to begin with? Um, it shows how resilient we were all season. Uh, we were we was in this position a lot this season as far as, like, being counted out and um, still fighting to get back to the top. But um, I, I'm so proud of our guys tonight for um, standing there and hanging in there. Going on the right side on the aisle. Um, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Uh, this can be for any of you guys. Um, considering the importance of this game, have you ever been in a, a game kind of like this one? I think um, ever since we played, I mean, I think the whole season we've been in battles, like tough battles, pound for pound games. Um, but I think uh, when we played Georgia, uh, that's kind of when we pulled together and that's when we started playing the most together we ever played. I mean, if you go back to the beginning of the season, uh, we had one of the toughest schedules in the country. And I think, kind of think that's where it all started. That's where um, our, our guys just uh, had that belief in our, in our coaching staff, also had belief in just us as a unit. And uh, we had a lot of games. It was pound for pound. Just a lot of games, just not this one. Others for the student athletes come back down uh, on the front. Yeah, Travis Brown with the Eagle Boots. Uh, when you look back at this season, uh, what's your first kind of take on what it means to you? And, and then to have, I know you would prefer to win, but the game, the way it kind of played out and how kind of epic it was at the end to, to kind of cap off the career at A&M. Uh, I want to give a big shout out just to um, Texas A&M University, uh, the 12th man, uh, the coaching staff, um, Coach Buzz, my teammates. Uh, just everybody who had belief in us, you know, it's not only me. I mean, I couldn't do it without the guys next to me and the rest of my team, all the coaching staff. And a big shout out to um, all the families, man. Everybody played a role, you know. Uh, yeah. Others for student athletes. All right, gentlemen, we'll let you head back to the locker room. Thank you for your time. We'll open it up uh, to questions for Coach Williams. Uh, if you raise your hand, we'll get you a mic starting right in front of me. Coach Jonah Dillon, Commercial Appeal. Just what did it, what felt like was the difference in overtime? Well, I think it was the same problem that we had had the first 40 minutes, just fighting incredibly hard to try to get consecutive stops. Um, I think we probably scored enough points. We just couldn't, we couldn't get enough stops. Um, whether that was our first shot defense and they got a long rebound or an offensive rebound. 
so I, I don't know that there was much different difference in the last five minutes than than how I felt in the in the first 40 minutes. Right in front of us, other Mike. Yeah, Travis Brown with the Eagle. Coach, what was drawn up on the buzzer beating play? Kind of what was the the first look and um, what was your thoughts when you saw Andy shoot it and then went in? Yeah, we um, down the stretch. Obviously, we ran a, a lot of our specials. Uh, probably more specials in this game than we have, arguably all year long. Some full court specials. A couple of sidelines. I think only one sideline. And then uh, the out of bounds play that you're mentioning. Obviously, uh, thankful that that Andy hit the shot. Um, we altered a little bit of that special, um, not the actual play, just where the players were within the play. And then, kind of the same message, to be honest, Travis, that we had uh, over the last six or seven ATOs. Like, guys, we've got to get some stops, stops in a row. We've got to collect some turkeys. And to be able to extend it to give us a chance the next five minutes, obviously it's a shot that will go down in Texas A&M lore. Um, but it was to tie, it wasn't to win, you know. A left side on the back. Justin Williams from The Athletic. Coach, the Houston defense has a tendency to kind of wear teams down and, and break them. The, you're down 10 with a minute and a half left. What were you telling your team, and how did they prevent themselves from, from kind of getting broken down and being able to come back? Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree a little bit, Justin, with what our guys said. Um, they're phenomenal. Um, I mean, they're the number one team in the country, number one in the net, number two in Kim Palm. And a lot of it, to your point, is just the physicality that they play with. And they play with that same type of leverage on offense that they do on defense. Um, I, I thought it was a heavyweight fight. And there were times where we may have won the round. And there were for sure times where they won the round. I, I, I don't think that <clears throat> there was ever any point where our guys felt emotionally as if it was over. Um, similar to what I said to Travis, uh, because of time score momentum, we were having to run a lot of specials down the stretch. Um, and our staff has been very consistent in practicing those and our guys had good comfort with it. Um, we were a little out of sorts even on that play. You know, Mo had already fouled out, so that kind of changes the dynamic over the last three and a half weeks. But a large portion of their success is because of the physicality, the toughness, the intensity uh, that they play with. But without arrogance, a credit to them, I, I don't think that we step back from any of that. Going to our left side, then one from Zoom. Brent Swarneman, Eastern Chronicle Buzz. I know y'all were a point away from playing in the Sweet 16 in Dallas, but you, get, you got an NCAA tournament victory. Could you just kind of sum up this, this season? Yeah, thanks for asking. I, I think that it's so hard to live, to practice, to coach, to play, and be committed to something regardless of result. And I think our group was steadfast, whether it was an injury, a suspension, hard schedule, winning streak, losing streak, on the bubble, not on the bubble. I think regardless of result, they had great belief and ownership and what we did. And 
in some respects, Brent, I actually think the 45-minute game tonight was just a microcosm of what you've seen from us, good and bad, throughout the year. And I just admire our guys so much. Uh, we need to do better. I need to coach better. We need more guys. All of the things that a coach would say, but I, I don't want to rush to the next thing. I understand life is now, but I just have such gratefulness and admiration for how they've handled all of it. And I think our staff was a huge component of that. And all of the people that would never have a chance to get up here, Eli has the same amount of belief as Boots does. And I've known Eli a little over six months and I've known Boots a little over six years. It's just, I just think it's a rarity and I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not playing in Dallas. I'm thankful that we won a game here. Just as thankful as that we got here. And just as thankful that we handled the five game losing streak with such, such character. And um, I know that's a long answer. So I just admire the steadfastness that our group has displayed no matter externally what was going on. Two more, one from Zoom. We'll finish it up in the room, but Dan, go ahead. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Kind of going off of that, Coach, you made the decision a few years back to come to Texas A&M and reflecting on how far the team got this year, how close you were to a team that, like you said, was at the top of the rankings nationally. Just what's been the most rewarding part of the run, not just this season, but to be the coach of the Aggies? Yeah, I, uh, very thankful. Uh, I, I thought I was going to be a uh, 2A high school coach or a junior college assistant. So this is for sure more and better and bigger uh, than any dream that I've had. Um, and specific to Texas A&M, like you and everybody else that's here, uh, over the last five years, there's been a lot of change. Um, I think we went 10 and eight and, and won five out of our last seven in year one, and then the world changed. We were fighting a lot of problems uh, throughout COVID. I had the longest diatribe ever in year three on not playing in the tournament and still won a bunch of games and had an incredible experience um, all the way to New York. I think actually over the last calendar year, uh, we've made a lot of adjustments that have been beneficial not only for this year's team, but hopefully for the future. And I appreciate the, uh, Justin Moore as the deputy AD and he's been here the entire time that I've been here, uh, he's been the one constant that has been incredibly supportive to try to help us internally build it uh, the way that we would like. Um, obviously, the portal started during that time, NIL started during that time. So there's been a lot of massive changes that every program has been through. and. We're, we're trying to continue to evolve and morph without sacrificing what we believe is most important. And our staff has been great. I think we have had one, we've had two staff changes in five years, which is remarkable. And I think we've done a really good job in identifying the right character and the right talent. We just need to keep doing better and more. And so, Thanks for the question, and I'm sorry I'm very inefficient with my words. Last one, Coach, comes from the aisle here. Uh, yeah, Buzz Olin Buchanan. Who was that guy? Where'd he come from? He was on the Zoom. 
I know, but who is it? <laughs> Dan, you I mean, to... I don't mind the question. I'm just saying. <laughs> Coach, I covered you back in at Marquette and all the way through, so I've been well, covering Well, you see how I've aged. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was 16 years ago, huh? Yeah, well, you're doing good, Coach. Congratulations on everything you've done up to this point. It's a pleasure to cover you. That's nice of you. Thank you. Join us anytime. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Olin Buchanan, Tech Sags. And Coach, I was wondering, uh, did you get a sense that your guys came out maybe a little tight or overhyped or anything uh, too emotional? But, and if so, did that contribute to the uh, issues at the, at the free throw line early? And when you look back, will you – have extra frustration think about how close y'all came and what might have been uh, if y'all shot the way y'all typically do at the free throw line. Yeah, um, I actually think uh, our guys have been really mature emotionally throughout this week. Um, and I think our staff has done a good job of giving them digestible parts to the game plan. Uh, we haven't been doing extra long sessions. We've kind of added an extra one um, over the last few weeks that has been good for us. I did not sense that. Um, to shoot 45 free throws is outstanding. That tells you that we're playing the way we would like to play. Um, I think our offensive rebound percentage was tremendous. I think that's a season high, 26 offensive rebounds. I don't know how many possessions. It was a fast game for us, but um, I think in any game like this, Olin, uh, not necessarily now, and I won't watch it for a while, um, but for sure, you know, uh, make a free throw. Uh, I wish we would have got that long, unclean rebound. Um, there, there will always be specifics to the game that in a two-possession overtime game against the number one team in the country to go to the Sweet 16, I think you'll always wish that it would have been different. Um, but I, I don't think that it was anything in regards to the excitement of it all. Coach, with that, we'll let you go. Thank you for your time tonight you. and all weekend. Thank you.